Three, two, one. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are back with yet another episode of the Talk of Tokyo podcast. We got season three, episode seven. Yeah, hey man, we say it all the time, what a time to be an anime fan, but in this case, what a time to be a subscriber of this channel, I'm not going to lie, it's always a movie when we get to do these, but especially when we get to do the Talk of Tokyo podcast, I'm not going to lie, anime has been going crazy. Hell yeah, especially when you want to talk about the fall season being upon us, I mean, woo! They be coming with a bang, everything is stepping, and even the animes that are ongoing from the summertime. They've been kind of trying to keep up with this fall wave. But when you want to talk about that fall wave, oh, man, we got Dan to Dan episode one. We got Bleach Core three episode one. Blue Lock season two episode one. Dragon Ball Dynamite thing comes out next weekend. Yeah. The whole fall season has been so amazing. But another anime that already has two episodes out that had a lot of hype before dropping and especially after episode one dropped is Uzumaki. Now, the horror genre as a whole hasn't been very relevant recently until Uzumaki. And when you want to look at Uzumaki, it's interesting to say the least. I mean, episode one had everybody saying, what the fuck are we watching? I mean... When you want to talk about doing yeah. what it's supposed to, making your skin crawl, it's been doing a great job at that. The shit is creepy, 100%. But when you look at it just as an anime, it's kind of hard to follow at times. Like, the story's kind of all over the place. It's really just a bunch of creepy shit happening in spurts. And it's to the point where, even after watching two episodes, I don't know a single character's name. When you really think about it, it's kind of hard to really put Uzumaki on a pedestal similar to some of these other animes that are airing especially. But the question is, does Uzumaki, so far after the first two episodes, does Uzumaki live up to the hype? Hmm. See, it's tough because there's four episodes. Like, if this was a 13-episode season, then by default, the answer would be hell yeah, just because of episode one alone. But the fact that there's four episodes, I'd say that you have to be really hard on all four episodes. Like, episode 100% lived up to the hype. But episode two kind of detoured. Like... I don't think it was a bad episode and what they were going for. I mean, it was there, but at the same time, I wouldn't call it absolutely crazy. Like for me, it's tough because the show is creepy, but at the same time, I kind of, I mean, I went in blind. I wasn't really expecting anything, but at the same time, like I wouldn't say I've been blown away. It's just been creepy. So, with the hype that it had, I was kind of expecting to be blown away. So, I feel like, is it a good anime? Sure. But has it lived up to the hype that it had? I want to say low-key no. I agree. And the reason for that is, like you said, it only has four episodes. Like, it's different from judging something like Naruto that has 700. When there's an episode that's not really hitting crazy it doesn't matter because there's 30 more that hit out the park but when you want to talk about something that's only going to be four episodes let alone we've only gotten two it's like you have to be way more critical the shit is already halfway done so it's like episode one came with that creep factor and i was expecting it to get even creepier as it went on which episode two it had nasty shit i guess but overall it's like you bring back the same characters as episode one so it's a continuing story in this town but i don't want to say shit's not making sense but 
like, where is, like, I don't really know where this is going for real. Like, it's kind of just a bunch of bad shit happening back to back. Like, the creep factor yeah. they were going for for the horror genre, it's there 100%. And it's bringing people back into that vibe, but as an anime, it's like, it's, it's, the, the creep factor carries it like shit. There's really nothing else you can take from it. So, yeah. just off of that, I would have to say, no, it doesn't live up to the hype. Type shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Especially because, at the end of the day, you said it yourself, we're two episodes deep. I don't know a single, I don't know the name of a single character so far. There's pretty much no story to follow because it's all over the place. Like, it's not a bad anime, again. It's just, with the hype that it had, I was expecting this to be a contender for anime of the season. This could very well be a sleeper of the season just because of how it's delivering. Hell yeah. But, hey man, let us know. Does Uzumaki... Or has Uzumaki lived up to the hype so far? Let us know in the comments. Hell yeah. Let us know in the comments because that's a very, very interesting one. But just to segue, you know, two animes that are arguably the greatest of all time is Naruto and One Piece. They both do a lot of amazing things. But two of the things that they are really great at is characters. Like... They're both arguably the kings of characters. And one thing that they have is dynamics between the characters. Naruto has teams. And as far as One Piece goes, it has the Straw Hat crew. Like, that alone is its own team. But even on that team, you have dope-ass characters on the main cast. You have Team 7. Uh, yeah, with Team 7 with Naruto, Sasuke, Kakashi, and Sakura. And on the other side of the fence, you have the Straw Hats with all of them. Like, it's a lot of niggas. But with that comes a lot of load and a lot of burdens and a lot of tasks that you have to carry. And just off of that, by default, typically there's going to be a weak link. So just keeping everything in mind, between Usopp and Sakura, who's the weaker link to their team? Ooh. Okay, my first thought was Sakura, just because, you know, the whole narrative about Sakura being the weak link, and the fact that when your team has less people on it, your low, the burden, like you said, when, you come, when it comes to carrying a burden, the burden is bigger when there's less people to carry it. So my first thought was going to be Sakura. But the more I think about it, Sakura bringing the healing factor. We all know in the war, Naruto pretty much healed more people than Sakura did. But at the same time, she did heal a lot of people. Like, that is valuable. And especially in Shippuden and beyond, she's not necessarily trash in a fight. She just doesn't belong in certain fights. Hell yeah. So when you want to talk about Usopp, Usopp... We talk about Usopp a lot in the sense where he needs an upgrade. And his upgrade is so necessary to the point where he had observation, never used it again. His role in the crew is to be a funny nigga. Like, he, he's the a tell-a-joke-ass nigga on the crew right now. And when it comes to weak links, there's only so many plays that he's even made post-time skip. Like... I can't even just name one off the top of my head. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, aside from the sugar thing, it's like, yeah. how much does Usopp really put in work like that? So it's like, I low-key want to say Usopp for this, for the weaker link. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it's tough. Like, the difference between the two characters is one is loved while the other is hated. But when you want to put that aside and look at who's the weaker link, that's where it gets tough. Because Sakura is easily the weakest link to team seven but at the same time that's mostly just because of who's on her team exactly. she has kakashi naruto sasuke and yeah like even if you want to throw in sai and yamato she was the weak link for a while but when you actually consider all things considered she's still a valuable asset to the team 
I think that's where there's the difference between Usopp. Like, <clears throat> Usopp's the sniper, but aside from sniping Sugar, who's he really sniping? Like, at the end of the day, I hate to say it, but Usopp is the weakest link to the Straw Hats right now, just by default. And that's not to say he's a weak link. He's just the weakest link. Like, there's a difference. But just off of that, when you want to compare him to Sakura, he doesn't bring nearly as much to the table as Sakura does. So I agree with you. Usopp is definitely the weaker link to his team. Hell yeah, especially, like, when you look at Sakura, she's the weak link because of who's on her team, like you said. When you want to take Sakura and put her on a different team, now, obviously, it depends on the team, but there's a chance she's not the weakest link anymore. Whereas yeah. Usopp, you take him off the Straw Hats, he's still the weakest link by default for the pretty much. Like, unless you want to in, con- include fodder niggas with no name. Like, mm-hmm. you, you take uh, Sakura and put her on... Uh, Shino's team. She's no longer the weak link on that team. Like, if anything, she's even with them. Whereas Us- Usopp, you take him off and put him with the big mom pirates, excluding the fodder with that don't have names. And even some of the fodder, like, they was boxing Luffy. Like, yeah. he might still, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I gotta go with Usopp being the weakest link. Do I think it's gonna stay like that? Maybe not, but... Usopp hasn't done anything to prove otherwise. Hell yeah. So, yeah, I'm but, here with you by default. Hey, man, let us know in the comments between Usopp and Sakura, who is the bigger, who is the weakest link to their team? Hell yeah, definitely let us know. That's an interesting question, I'm not going to lie. But just to segue a little bit, I think we can all agree that solo leveling had a pretty fire debut season it caught a lot of people off guard especially with the whole hunters association and the factions and all of that and the world building itself but obviously the best part about solo leveling is sun jin woo himself like as a main character especially once he i guess died i don't know he didn't even die for real he was just hospitalized and then came back with this new power it's almost like he became a video game character he had the whole menu popping up and shit. Like, he he came from being the weakest hunter the world had ever seen to being one of the coldest hunters in the verse overnight. Like, literally overnight, that switch up happened to him. But just in general, how would you rate Sung Jin Woo as a character? Mm. Honestly, my first initial thought is he is strong as shit. Like, that's, let's just get that out the way. The brother is broken. You could make a case for overpowered, 100%. But we're not, telling, we're not talking about power scaling when you want to ask, how would you rate him as a character? Mm-hmm. When you want to talk about how would you rate him as a character... My first initial thought is really C plus, if not B minus. Like, I want to say B minus, but I feel like that's too much grace, low key. Like, I think I'm gonna have to give him a C plus. Just my initial thoughts. I'm I'm kind of right there with you. See, coming into this question, I'm not gonna lie. I never actually thought about it, <laughs> so. I'm kind of right there with you. Like, first initial thoughts, I'm thinking C+. Just because strength, he's strong as shit. He became strong as shit. And I think the narrative of him being the weakest the world had ever seen into switching into being this cold and people still don't know it yet is very interesting. But him as a character, like, his whole dynamic with his family being poor and, uh, what is it, his mom being sick or something like that, and he's kind of taking care of his sister, like... That's a very fire concept for him, but as far as being the main character goes, especially just off season one, all he really did was level up and get stronger and fight dungeons. So it's like, when you want to talk about as a character, he didn't really do much to prove that he's higher than a C plus as a character. 
Strength holds hey, it for Bravo, what? but as a character, I think C plus is where he's at right now. And when you want to talk about potential, I think he has potential to be a B plus tier character easily, like easily in the future, later on down the line. But a lot of people may hear C plus and get the oh, what You're do you hazy. mean mid? Like yeah, like. Being mid is not necessarily a bad thing. Like, and we're not necessarily calling him mid. It's just That's we're calling a really state a spade. It sounds worse than it is. It really does. Especially because we had this combo off camera, right? Where we were talking, slight little segue, but we're still on topic. But we were talking about the Dragon Ball slander that's for some reason been happening and how people hold it to a standard of S tier or ass being an A tier or a B tier or even a C tier is not bad is when you get down to D E F that's when it's bad, but yeah, being a C plus is not bad. It's mid, if anything, but like that's mid actually not, amazing. Like when you really think about it, mid should be like D like well c tier is mid but mid is not bad though like you get the point c is not c bad. and b tier characters make up an anime yeah, make yeah. up the best animes like you don't just see a tier characters like that or s tier especially s tier i think people throw that around way too lightly like when you want to talk about an s tier character like, you're looking at the top of anime for characters. The best characters you've ever seen. That's S. You can't just throw anyone in that category. So, fuck no, Sung Jin Woo is not S tier off of one season. Nor is he A tier. And I personally don't think he's B tier. If you want to throw him B minus, I'm not mad at it. I just don't think so. So, I would yeah. say he's C plus. Yeah, I'm right there with you. But, hey, man, let us know in the comments because that's a very, very interesting one. Especially because Solo Leveling had a very interesting season one. And arguments could be made that there's a perfect marriage between Sun Jin Woo and Solo Leveling. Yeah. But just to segue, I'm not going to lie. We talked a little bit about grading characters and just how people like to throw around S tiers and A tiers casually. It's crazy because people do. But we also said that B and C tier characters make up an anime. Well, in these two cases, it's quite the opposite. They actually have a plethora of A and B tier characters with a few S tier characters. Both of them do. But just to go into them both, the two animes that I'm talking about is My Hero and Hunter x Hunter. Both animes are fantastic. They both have a fantastic story. But we're here to talk about the characters because both animes hit it out the park when you want to look at their characters. My Hero has a fantastic bag from Deku, Todoroki, Bakugo, Shigaraki, All for One, All My Endeavor. The list goes on. That's just the main five or six. But there's so many bangers in My Hero. There's almost like a baby One Piece in that regards. But then again, you want to look at Hunter x Hunter. Hunter x Hunter also has an amazing cast. Gon and Kalua are both like yin and yang for just goats in the anime community. And Kule Oreo is pretty chill. Karapika is a vibe. The Phantom Troop as a group is lit. And Miram is one of the greatest villains of all times. Just in general, both animes hit it out the park when you want to talk about their cast. But just keeping everything in mind... Between Hunter x Hunter and My Hero, which anime did better with the characters? Mm. Off rip, especially recently, I'm going to go with My Hero. But when you want to break it down, like one thing that Hunter has for sure over My Hero at the moment is villains that is 100 percent hunter x hunter got that maroon's one of the best ever 
Crollo is one of my personal favorites, so there's a little bit of bias. But Merrim is one art like he's one or two non debatable. He's top three all time as the villain. Yeah. So when you want to talk about villains, I think <sighs> Hunter got that. But just in general, considering everybody, I feel like Hunter x Hunter, they have a bag of characters, but they didn't expand on that bag as much as My Hero did. Especially when you want to look at recently, uh, My Hero, Ochako, she just went the fuck off. Like, Ochako's a character I didn't care for that much. And I'm just using her as an example, because there's a lot of them in My Hero that did this, like Red Riot, for example. But yeah. as a character who they were cool just seeing them in class 1A, but I didn't really think that much of them as a character. And then out of nowhere, they just get their own moment. They get their own special moment of saving a villain. Like, that literally, we said it while we watched the episode, she jumped a tear as a character from that scene. Giving characters like that... Uh, the people that were dealing with Spinner, Kota, and uh, whoever the other one was. Like, they're pretty much jumping tears when they get these moments to themselves. So it's like, Hunter yeah. didn't exactly do that with their bag. So, just off of that, I'm going to give this one to my hero. See, for me, it's really tough because... The difference is Hunter x Hunter has two S tier characters. Like, don't get me wrong. When you want to look at MC alone, I do think Deku is the better MC than Gone. But at the same time, Tomato Tomato, they're both S tier characters. But the difference is Kalua is also an S tier character. My hero doesn't have a Kalua. Now, at the same time, when you want to talk about that A tier realm, my hero has a few A tier characters like Todoroki and Bakugo and Endeavor and Toya and Shigaraki. All four of them are all A tier. All my two is A tier. That's like five A tier characters. Then you want to talk about the B tier. There's a plethora of B tier characters in my hero. Whereas, as far as Hunter x Hunter goes, Outside of those two S tier characters, three Miram's S tier, but outside of those three S tier characters, you got Hisoka who's A tier, Krolo who's A tier, Karapika who's A tier. Like, I'm not gonna lie, they have quite a few. Then you wanna talk about their B tier, Alumi's B tier, like, pretty much majority of the Hunters or Phantom Troop or. The rest of the cast that matters is pretty much all B tiers. Like, I'm not gonna lie, this is interesting because Hunter X Hunter sneakily has a amazing cast, a top ten cast, just like My Hero. And the difference between Hunter X Hunter and My Hero is My Hero has a straight shot of a fantastic story to go with the characters. Hunter X Hunter, the characters kind of carry the anime. The Chimera Anarch and York New had a nice story, but at the same time, the characters kind of made it a nice story. Like, it's kind of really, really tough for me, especially for when you want to talk about the villains. Like, I would give it... If I had to give it to one, I would give it to my hero, but I feel like it's really close. Like, I would probably say that's like a 53-47. I'm the other way with the villains, I ain't gonna lie. Maybe it's a little bit of bias, because you, if y'all are in the Discord, you see my name. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, I'm not saying My Hero has the better villains. I'm saying My Hero has the better characters. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, then I'm right there with you. Okay, like, I feel like when you look, when it comes to hunter's bag of characters especially like using the phantom troop as an example they're lit they're lit as hell but they didn't really get much like time really like they didn't really get that time to show why they're such good characters we just get that feeling while watching them we can feel their quality but they didn't have a lot of time to really show how good of characters they really were like, for all we know, they could be a tier character. We don't know. We we haven't got to see them. So it's like, my hero, we get to see all of it. 
So just off of that, I'm def I'm right there with you. I would go my hero. And if I had to put a number on it, I'd probably go fifty two forty eight. Okay. Well, let us know in the comments between my hero and Hunter X Hunter. Which anime did better with the cast? Which anime has the better bag of characters? Like, both animes have quality characters. And they have lore and quantity behind them, too. So let us know which anime has the better bag of characters. Hell yeah. And I'm very interested in how you guys are going to answer that, too. That's an interesting one, for sure. But just to segue a little bit, JJK has been fantastic after two seasons especially when you want to talk about pure hype jjk has it and then some like the story is nice they it's it's kind of somewhat rolling in at this point it's it's there but it's not crazy right then you want to talk about the characters i ain't gonna lie the characters are pretty lit there's still more we could get from some of them some of them get killed off we get it but they're still pretty lit it's a pretty lit bag of characters the scene execution is fucking top tier. And the creativity is through the roof. But hype is one of the biggest things that JJK has going for it. It's all hype. Every episode has hype. So I started thinking about it. You could say the hype in JJK, talking strictly about hype, is generational. So just off of that... Going off of pure hype alone, is JJK already top five most hyped animes of all time? Hmm. It's not top three off rip. By the Just fault. because Dragon Ball's by default the most hype anime of all time. It's not even my favorite, but it's the most hype. Mm -hmm. um, it's not more hype than One Piece. Mm -hmm. And it's not more hype than Attack on Titan. Um, the real question is, aside from those three, which animes have more hype going forward than JJK? Like, I do want to say Demon Slayer low-key might have a little bit more hype going forward when it comes to those moments. Like, that's debatable. But at the same time... They're like here and here with it when it comes to the hype. Like, I don't know if I want to say Naruto and Bleach does low key. Like, I feel like I'm disrespecting them by saying they don't. But at the same time, I don't know. I like, don't know. Thousand Year Blood War is airing right now. We're going to find out exactly how much hype it really has. But as far as Naruto, Naruto has kind of been over for damn near seven eight years now and the hype hasn't faded so that's kind of where it's tough like my, the thing with naruto's hype like especially those like those hype moments in naruto i feel like a lot of it is almost overshadowed by everything else that happens like and it's kind of hard to say that but i'm looking at it like there's certain fight scenes that happen, like the Hedon fight, for example. As amazing as that fight was, it was a great fight, but it wasn't hype. It was just so interesting, you're locked into it. It's like everything that happens in JJK is straight hype. Like every altercation, and that's pretty much what the show is. is niggas with curses, niggas fighting curses. That's the whole shit so far. Like, season two had a little bit more to it with the fake ghetto and all of that. Sunkana being revived, that's more hype. Like, I don't know if mm. I could say it's really disrespectful to say JJK has more hype than Naruto. I don't know if I would say disrespectful. Like, it's tough, especially because, see, I think it's a matter of times, too. Like, if Naruto was airing today, a lot of the moments would probably be ground shattering. Like, Definitely. look at One Piece for an example. Gear 5th is easily the most hype moment in One Piece. And it's not close. But at the same time, Wano itself is probably the most hype arc. But that doesn't necessarily make it the best arc 
at the end of the day, Annie's lobby had a lot of hype too. Dress Rosa had a lot of hype too. If it was airing now, especially as big as the community is now, the hype would have been crazy. Like imagine Luffy meeting Sabo as hype as that was. And it was probably as crazy, like who am I to speak? It was probably crazy then too. Like oh, it probably man, imagine Annie's lobby now. <sighs> type shit. Like that's kind of where I'm at with the Naruto hype. Like Naruto, I feel like the moments aren't as surreal, but at the same time, they are. Like, I feel like it depends on which moments you're talking about. Like, I feel like it's kind of tough depending on what times it was in, but that's kind of the other thing, too. I guess I'll say Naruto, I don't recall Naruto just shattering the internet or community. But at the same time, like, that could just be a matter of time. So, like, I don't know if I can say JJK has more hype over it just because of that. Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe it might be the recency bias in me talking when I say that. I'm not going to lie. Because, like you said, Naruto's been done since, like, 2017. So, that's a long time. JJK had the ball for a while recently. So, that might just be what it is. Maybe I'm talking out my fucking ass when I say that, but... It's not disrespectful, I will say that, because JJK is crazy with it. Now, the other anime you said, Demon Slayer, that's kind of where my mind was going into this, because the first three, Dragon Ball, One Piece, uh, AOT, those by default, right? And that's why I didn't say top three, I said top five, because they're 100% over. But Demon Slayer was the other one I was thinking about. Like, ah, that's tough. Yeah. I might say JJK over Demon Slayer. For strictly hype. Ah. That, that, that's tough. I don't know if I can even say that low key. Like, the Shibuya art. <laughs> What's crazy? was probably more hype than any of Demon Slayer's arcs. But as a whole, like, season one of JJK wasn't as hype as season two. I think as a whole, Demon Slayer has more hype than JJK. That's fair. Yeah, I would give that. Especially just the, like, as a full arc, the Shibuya incident is one of the most hype arcs in all of anime ever. But yeah, the whole anime... When you include season one, I'll give that to you. I would say Demon Slayer. Like, just the moments. There's so many moments scattered throughout all four seasons so far. Let alone, we're about to get more of them. Good Lord. But, yeah. So, that's four right there. Does JJK take that fifth spot? Or do you put Naruto? I mean, I guess Naruto would be over Demon Slayer, right? Yeah, like... I don't even know if I want to include Naruto because I can't really speak on the Naruto hype. I'm not going to lie. Type shit. And as far as Bleach goes, like, Bleach is probably about to go crazy. Like, for all we know, like, it's hard for me to say JJK has more hype than Bleach. Like, I don't want to ever say that. Now, if you want to say the Shibuya incident, comparing it to the Thousand Year Blood War, I would say the Shibuya incident was more hyped than Core 2, because that's what was airing when the Shibuya incident was airing. Core 2 was the one that aired that year. But I don't know if I can just turn around and say the Shibuya incident makes JJK as a whole more hyped than Bleach, especially even if you want to dim it down to just the Thousand Year Blood War. I don't know if I can say JJK is more hype than the Thousand Year Blood War. Okay, so so I, yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. I will put Bleach probably in that fifth spot then. So, damn, that means the answer is no, huh? JJK is not top five when it comes to pure hype, people. Pure hype. It's debatably. It's debatably, though. And the fact that it is says a lot about JJK. Like, 
JJK has a lot of haters, and a lot of people are going to hear this and go, yeah, JJK is all hype. Like, you damn right, nigga. The hype's amazing. And it's not all hype either. But, like, when did hype become a bad thing? Exactly. And that's I, I don't fucking get it. Like, JJK's haters are the same niggas that be hating on Dragon Ball all of a sudden. When the we'll fuck did that start? Mm-hmm. Story is nice. It's not crazy, but it's nice. And then it's hype all the way from beginning to end. When is that a bad thing? We're going to get into all of that. Mm-hmm. Shit. But hey, man, just in general, let us know. Is JJK going off strictly hype? Is JJK top five all time? Let us know in the comments. Hell yeah. Let us know in the comments because that's a very interesting one. And especially because I know JJK has a lot of hate. It receives a lot of unnecessary slander. Like I said, we're going to get into all of that. But not necessarily for JJK. For the OG JJK, if you will. The OG fight heavy anime that is the goat. One of the goats. But also receives hella slander. That's also unnecessary Dragon Ball. Like... Dragon Ball is a goat ass anime and it receives so much unnecessary slander for the plot. And the biggest one is nostalgia. But that's kind of the big thing we're here to talk about today. It's not just Dragon Ball. Nostalgia itself, I hate it. I hate that argument so much. It's a brain dead argument, in my opinion. But at the same time, I get it. People like to use it, but people throw it around. They throw it at Dragon Ball. They throw it at just Dragon Ball. They throw it anywhere they can. So just keeping everything in mind, is nostalgia fair to use against an anime? Hell no. And that's not even just for anime. That's in general. But speaking on anime, like since when did nostalgia become a bad thing? Like, the only way nostalgia can be seen as a bad thing when talking about an anime is if people are using nostalgia to justify why it's better than something else. That's the only reason why you can say, no, nah, you're just stuck in the past. Like, when people try to, like, for Dragon Ball, for an example, when people say, oh, Dragon Ball's better, it's the most iconic, it, it's, it's the reason why all of it, that doesn't fucking matter. Like, that's where nostalgia becomes looked at as a bad thing is when people use it like that. When people weaponize nostalgia, that's where people say, no, nah, you're just stuck in the past. But in general, no, I don't think nostalgia should be used against an anime because nostalgia, like, it makes you feel good. That's where it's your childhood. It's whatever the case. Like, yeah, it, it, it makes thing. you feel better when you watch it that second time. So I don't know why that would be used against it. And here's my thing. <clears throat> It doesn't even make sense. Like, first of all, for something to be nostalgic, it has to be good. Nostalgia doesn't just get that label first things first. You're not going to just say, oh, this is old. Now it's nostalgia. This is antique. Now it's nostalgia. That's two different things. There's a difference between being antique and being nostalgic. Nostalgic typically stems from something that's good, first and foremost. Second of all, when niggas use the nostalgia argument, 9 out of 10, they go, oh, Dragon Ball is just nostalgia. Oh, it's just nostalgia. Oh, you're just being nostalgia. Oh, you're just stuck. Usually it's against Dragon Ball, which is why I'm using Dragon Ball as an example. Here's my thing. You can use that argument for anything that passes the test of time. I feel like that's what nostalgia is. Nostalgia is a counter for anything that passes the test of time. It's like a way of diminishing it. Like, One Piece, when it passes the test of time, niggas are going to start saying, oh, nostalgia, nostalgia. Like, no, nigga, the anime is actually that great. Dragon Ball. When people try to say it's great, they'll go, oh, nah, you're just stuck. It's just nostalgia. Nah, nigga, it actually has a story. It's not the greatest, but it actually has a story. It actually has great fights. It actually is very creative. It actually has amazing scene execution. It's a very relatable anime. Like, Dragon Ball is a peak-ass anime on all cylinders. But people try to say nostalgia like that doesn't even make sense like 
because it passes the test of time, it just invalidates what makes it great. Exactly. And it's like, if you're going to throw nostalgia at Dragon Ball, you could turn around and throw nostalgia at Evangelion. You could throw nostalgia at Naruto. You could throw nostalgia at Cowboy Bebop. You could throw nostalgia at any anime that passes the test of time and becomes great, a.k.a. any S-tier anime that's not from this time, like, or A-tier. Like, it's a brain-dead argument. It's a brain-dead argument. I hate it. But just in general, no, I don't think it's fair to use nostalgia against animes. Vice versa, that goes both ways. Just because an anime is old and has inspiration for a lot of new animes doesn't mean that you can just use that to say that anime's better than something new. It goes both ways. Nostalgia cannot be weaponized for or against an anime. You can't say, oh, uh, Cowboy Bebop influenced this, therefore it's better. It's not about who did it first. It's about who did it better. Like, Yeah, that's just as brain dead. It's just as brain dead. You cannot weaponize nostalgia. Nostalgia is a feeling. Like, You cannot weaponize a feeling of how you felt watching it. That doesn't make any fucking sense. But for the sake of the question, no. I do not think you can use nostalgia against an enemy. Yeah. But, hey man, let us know in the comments. Is it fair to use nostalgia against an anime? Hell yeah, definitely let us know. But just to segue into my final topic. Demon Slayer is an amazing anime and it's about to come to an end now its main character tanjiro really put demon slayer on his back and carried it to where it is right now his quality runs off on every other character which pretty much makes them way better than they are and he has a lot of amazing moments internet breaking moments and obviously his biggest moment is yet to come he's gonna take down muzan and that's going to be it. But just in general, since we haven't gotten there yet, what is Tanjiro's signature moment? Mm. That's an interesting one, just because Tanjiro has a lot of moments. Like we said, Demon Slayer in general has a lot of moments. Um, hmm. If I had to choose... Okay, there's a difference between his signature moment and his best moment. Mm -hmm. His signature moment is his most iconic moment. His best moment is straight up the best moment. In my opinion, his best moment is when he was fighting with Uzui versus Gitaro. Like... I think that was probably the best stuff. That was probably the peak of Tanjiro. Just yeah. watching him in his back. He got right stabbed there. through the bottom it's... of his... Man. That's definitely mm. his best moment. Best If moment. you had to ask me what... Yeah, best moment. If you had to ask me what was the signature moment, probably when... It would probably be the first time he got the forehead shit to activate. Like, when he first time broke the internet against that spider nigga. Yeah, because I was thinking about that. I was also thinking about episode one when Nezuko turned and he saved her from uh, Giyu. I was thinking about those two, but I feel like by default it has to be that, right? Like as Tanjiro's signature moment, it has to be against uh, Rui in the forest. Like the whole That's what scene, put Demon Slayer on the map. Literally, because that's... That's the scene that got everyone to actually watch it. I remember telling people to watch it, and no one did until that scene came out and shut Twitter down. So I feel like that kind of has to be Tanjiro's signature moment. But he has a lot. So let us know in the comments if you have a different one. Let us know what is Tanjiro's signature moment. Yeah, let us know because that's a very interesting one. A character like that is a legend, and he's a walking S tier character, which means he has a walking roster of S tier moments. So let us know out of those moments what is the signature moment. Hell yeah. But just the segue, while not going too far in the same neighborhood, staying in Demon Slayer, just to talk about it. 
Demon Slayer is closing in, is approaching Endgame. Like, and on one hand, that's tragic, but on the other hand, that's amazing just because Demon Slayer has had a historic run after four seasons. After four seasons, Demon Slayer is already one of the greatest new gen animes of all time, and just in general, is debatably an S tier anime. It does everything amazing. It has a amazing main character, and it has a very huge following to go with it. Like Demon Slayer is a signature pillar in the anime community, and it will be forever. But just one thing to talk about is the peak of Demon Slayer, the ceiling and the floor. The floor is we know Demon Slayer is at least an A tier anime. The ceiling is S tier. But when you want to really dive into that, it really makes you wonder exactly where would you put Demon Slayer? Would you put Demon Slayer at the summit of anime? That's the biggest question because I almost feel like S stands for summit when you want to talk about peak. So just keeping that in mind and looking at the current summit of anime, is Demon Slayer in the same room as One Piece? This is kind of a trap question for me, and my bias is about to come out here. But personally, I don't think anything is in the same room as One Piece. Now, that's my bias talking, but... I think One Piece is in a class of its own at the summit. Like, One Piece is the summit. That's how I see it. Everything else is fighting for some number two. So, just off of that, I would say no. But taking the bias out and just look at everything that's at the top of anime. You got Dragon Ball. You got the big three. Those types of animes Looking at Demon Slayer's peak. Ooh. It's tough. I don't like, know. I was going to say for, yes, but I don't know. For me, it's tough because on one hand, this is like, this is the peak of anime. This is literally the summit of S tier. This is the big S itself, One Piece. Like, I want to say fuck no immediately, but at the same time, I think about Demon Slayer and I think about where I would scale Demon Slayer and what I would compare Demon Slayer to. At the end of the day, One Piece is not alone at the summit. It just is the summit, but it's not alone there. The big three is by default with it. So is Dragon Ball. So is Attack on Titan. So is Hunter x Hunter. Like, there's a few bangers up there, Evangelion. Like, it may be a little bit of different heights up there, but Full at the end of the day, Alchemist. like, Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist, for sure. Like, at the end of the day, there's a lot of animes at that summit. It's just, when you want to talk about what is the summit, it's One Piece. And it makes me want to know, is Demon Slayer in that same room? Well, notice every anime we said isn't from the new gen. If you want to throw in the new gen, the only new gen anime off rip that's by default in that summit is My Hero and maybe Vinland Saga. When you want to talk about Demon Slayer, Demon Slayer has everything going for it that the summit has, at least community wise. Like cultural impact, yes, it's in that summit. Yeah. But when you want to look at everything else at the anime itself, that's where it becomes tough. Like the story. I think it's tough. I think the story is probably like a B plus tier story. Characters, that's probably like an A plus tier bag. When you want to talk about relatability, S tier. Scene execution, S tier. Creativity, probably A plus, if not S. Like, Demon Slayer is really interesting. Like, I don't know if I can just flat out say it's in that summit. Like, but at the same time, I want to say it's too good to be A tier. Like, I feel like it's S tier, but 
is it possible to be S tier and not in the same room as One Piece? Because when you want to look at that summit, that's what we're looking at when you want to look at the room One Piece is in. I think to answer that question specifically, I think it can be at the summit because the summit is not just like every anime we just talked about. That is the peak of anime, right? Like the summit is the peak of anime, but all of those animes that we just talked about, Full Metal Alchemist, Hunter x Hunter, My Hero, One Piece, Naruto, all of those animes are not actually as good as each other. So yeah. I feel like it doesn't have to be as good to be at the summit. However, I do think it has to be relatively close and that's the biggest problem with demon slayer because like you said cultural impact wise hell yeah it should be in there like you see the stickers on cars the movies the theaters are sold out like look at they they released the netflix most watched animes demon slayer season one season two and season three was like the top three like cultural impact wise it's in there 100 percent but the anime itself is kind of like, I don't know if I can do that. Like, that's what's holding it back is the actual body of work. So, yeah, for the right. sake of the question, I'm going to have to say no. Honestly, I think I'm right there with you. Like, I think we're going to have to circle back to this until once those movies drop. I think it's one movie, right? It's three of them. Okay, well, after these three movies drop, then we'll spin back to this question. But for now, I would say Demon Slayer is at the door to the summit. Like, it's at the door to that room, but I don't think it's in the same room as One Piece. When you want to look at the animes in that room, hell, I'm not sure if I would throw Death Note in the same room as One Piece. When you want to talk about throw Demon Slayer in the same room as One Piece... The answer is no. But I do think it's the bar. Yeah, I can see that 100%. Like, you gotta you got to pass Demon Slayer up to get into that room. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. But, hey, man, let us know in the comments. Is Demon Slayer in the same room as One Piece? Let us know. Hell yeah. Vice versa. Let us know about everything else we talked about in this episode of the Talk of Tokyo. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button so we know you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the big red subscribe button if you haven't already. And turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss episode 8 or any of our other special videos. We drop straight bangers on this channel. So make sure you guys tap in with us. With that being said, make sure you guys click our description. There will be three links waiting for you. The first one will take you to all of our socials, Sons of Tokyo on every platform. The second one will take you to our Discord. You feel me? Come on in. Come on in. You know what I'm saying? Join that Discord. Come vibe out with us. Talk about anything. Anime, not anime sports, movies. It don't matter. And last but certainly not least, the link to our Patreon will be in the description. You make sure you join that free of charge. You can watch every anime that we watch on the channel, including this whole new fall season over on Patreon. You can watch it with us. So make sure you guys check that out. But uh, yeah, man, with that being said, SOT out.